Hello everyone, Marco here and welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since the last time I published a video, but finally here I am to introduce you to the tool that convinced me to move my CRM away from ClickUp. This tool is Atio. Now, why I made this change and why Atio? I needed a more solid system for my sales pipeline and client management, and I chose Atio over others because I simply love how they structure the data model, how it enriches person and company records with the useful data points, the AI integration, and yeah, it looks really, really good. But without further ado, let's jump straight into it. First things first, let's take a fast look at the UI. As you can see, it's pretty clean with the left sidebar and the main panel. In the sidebar, you have the control panel section, which allows you to switch or add new workspaces and access the account and workspace settings. Then the quick access section allows you to quickly access the commands panel by simply using command plus K or quickly search your entire CRM using the slash button. This is pretty nice because you can also see a preview of some information related to any record without opening it. Next, the navigation panel lets you access records, notifications and tasks and notes that you can assign to your records. You can also manage your emails, generate reports with customizable dashboards to visualize your data and set up automation for custom email sequences and automated workflows. Lastly, the list sections, which we will cover in detail later in the video. Now, one of the most powerful features that made me choose Atio is the seamless way it syncs your email and calendar data to populate your CRM automatically. Setting this up is super easy. Just go to Settings, Email and Calendar Accounts, and you can connect your Google or Microsoft account. But before proceeding, check the Email and Calendar settings. Here you can choose how records are created. You can automatically create records for all contacts who appear in your workspace members' emails and calendar events, though I recommend not selecting this option, or alternatively, you can allow Atio to create records only for contacts who receive emails from your workspace member or appear in their calendar events. Or lastly, you can choose not to create records automatically. In this case, emails and calendar events will be linked to records that you create manually. Once you connect to your Google or Microsoft account, Atio works its magic in the background. It automatically creates and updates people and company records based on your email communications and calendar events. At this point, if you open your company and people records, you will see something like this. These columns are empty because I haven't connected my Google account to this workspace. However, if you have connected yours, you will see the connection strength, last email interaction and last calendar interaction fields populated. This information gives you insight into your relationships and communication with clients. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but if you return to the company's section, you can see information about their industry, employee range, estimated annual recurring revenue, funding raised, and more. What's really cool is that basically Atio automatically enriches these records with additional data it finds online. For example, when it detects a company email domain, it automatically fills in details like company size, location, social media profiles, and funding information if available. The same process applies to people records. Atio uses their email address to find information such as job titles, social media profiles, profile pictures, and more. Now, you can tell that data has been enriched by checking the field. If the field has this little spark icon, it means it was automatically enriched. I think this is one of the best features Atio offers. It dramatically reduces manual data entry and helps you keep your records up to date. Now, let's talk about one of the most important aspects of Atio, if not the most important. How data works in Atio. Atio's data model has four main components, objects, attributes, records, and lists. An object is like a template for storing and organizing your data in Atio. It's similar to a table in a spreadsheet with labeled columns and rows to arrange your information as you want. These are the fundamental building blocks of Atio. There are two standard objects enabled by default, people and companies. These objects, as we've already seen, organize and display data about the individuals and businesses you have interacted with. But Atio also has three other standard objects that you can enable by going to Settings and then Objects. These are Deals, Users and Workspaces. The Deals object shows data about sales deals in your pipeline, while the Workspaces and Users objects are for software businesses with PLG motions. They organize and display data about how users are using their software and the workspaces they've created. For example, for each workspace, you can monitor the number of active users, the number of built seats, and more. Finally, Atio allows you to create custom objects for tracking any type of data you need. And this is something that you don't see in every CRM. For example, we can create an object for our invoices. 
To do that, we need to click on the icon next to record and it will take you in the settings panel. Click on a new custom object and give it a name. Invoices for plural and invoice for singular. And click on create object. Here you can change the icon and the color of the object. And in the attribute section, you can see which type of information you can store for this object. As you can see, an object already comes with some default attributes. But you can add all the attributes you want depending on the information you want to store in a specific object. Let's add some attributes for our invoice object. So click on create an attribute. And here I can choose between various type of field. Let's start from a text type where we will store the number of our invoice. And I mark it as required and unique. You can also enable AI autofill and select different autofill options such as the research agent, which can search the web for information. But this is something for another video. For now, let's click on create attribute. Then I can create a currency attribute to store the amount of the invoice. I can choose the currency, how it will be shown, I personally like the code style, and how to manage and see the decimals. Next, I want to add a date attribute for the due date of the invoice. And now a very useful attribute that establishes a bidirectional relationship between records the relationship attribute. In this case, I can create a relationship between the invoices and the deals. Here you can also choose the type of a relationship, one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one or many-to-many. -many. In this case, I set it as many-to-one relationship since you could generate more invoices for one deal. Think for example when a client pay you 50% upfront and the rest at the end of the project. But let's create another relationship attribute. Again, a many-to-one relationship between invoices and companies. And lastly, let's add a status attribute to track the invoice status. And the stages can be sent, paid, past due and void. This time I also set the default value, this means that every time I add an invoice, the stage will be automatically set to sent. Great, so let's navigate to our object and since we didn't create any record yet, Atio asks us if we want to create a table view or a Kanban board view. In this case, I start with a table, but keep in mind that you can create multiple table and Kanban views whenever you want by clicking the drop down menu in the top left corner of the main panel and select create new view. Now that we have our table in place, it's time to create our first record. To do that, you can click on the plus icon here on the column header or you can click the new invoice button on the top right corner. Insert all the details and click on create record. Now, as you can see, by default, you will see the record ID under the invoice column. To customize it, go back to the settings, objects, invoices, and in the appearance tab, you can modify the record image and text. In this case, I choose the invoice number for both of them. And now, if I go back to our table, as you can see, we have the number of the invoice visible in the first column of the table. Now, if I open the invoice record, I can see all the details here on the right panel, but I'd like to see them right from the table view. To do that, I simply need to add new columns and choose the attribute I want to see. Now that we've covered objects, let's talk about another of my favorite features in Atio, lists. Lists in Atio are essentially collections of records from any object. Think of them as powerful customizable views of your data that can be configured exactly how you want them. And this flexibility is what makes lists so powerful. You can work with the same records in multiple contexts, customizing them to fit the requirements of different processes or teams, all the while the original records stay unchanged, providing a reliable single source of truth that keeps everyone on the same page. Let me show you how they work by creating a new list from scratch. I'll click the plus button next to lists. And here I can choose to use a template or start from scratch. In this case, I create a list from scratch, so you can see the entire process. 
First, I need to decide which object to manage in my list. Let's say I want to create a list for client onboarding. I select companies as the object and name the list onboarding. You can change the icon if you like and then click create list. As with the invoices object we created earlier, Atio prompts you to choose a view to start with. This time I want to start with a Kanban board and name it onboarding. As you can see, since I choose to start with a Kanban view, Atio asks me to select a status attribute to track the stages, in this case the onboarding stages of the companies. Because this is a new list, I don't have a status attribute available yet, so I create a new one called onboarding stage and click create new view. Now we have the status attribute, but I need to add the stages I want to track. To do this, I simply click the plus icon next to no stage. Here I can add stages such as sales handover, kickoff call scheduled, audit initial setup, and onboarded. You can also adjust the color of each stage. And to remove the no stage column, open view settings, go to visible columns and disable the no status column. Now let's add a couple of companies. Now in view settings under add card row, I can add any attribute related to the companies, such as estimated annual recurring revenue, funding raised, employee range, and more. If you scroll down, you'll see you can also add list attributes. For example, I can create a new user attribute called primary CSM to refer to the primary customer success manager. Now, this is an important concept. List attributes organize data specific to a particular list. They exist only within that list and do not affect the data structure of the object itself. However, if you open a record, you'll see a list section on the right side of the page. This section shows which list the record belongs to and displays the attributes stored in each list. This makes it easy to retrieve all the information about a record. A couple more things about lists. You can apply filters and save the view for everyone or create a new view with your changes so you don't modify the current one. And you can also share lists with the team members making collaboration easy. In summary, lists make the platform flexible and powerful for different workflows. Okay, now I want to talk about automations. As I mentioned during the UI overview, Atio lets you create custom workflows using a visual workflow builder within the platform. Here you can automate repetitive tasks or entire workflows and even integrate Atio with other tools. Let's build one together. Suppose that every time a deal is won, I want to add the client to the onboarding list we created earlier. To do this, I use the record updated trigger. I select the deal object and set the deal stage as the attribute to monitor. Next, I apply a filter so the automation continues only if the new value is 1. So when the deal stage changes to 1, I choose add a record to list. In this case, the list is onboarding. And the record will be a variable. Basically, I retrieve the company record from the updated deal that triggered the workflow. Then I set the onboarding stage to sales handover and assign myself as the primary CSM. After naming the workflow, I click publish workflow. Now let's test it. I move a deal to one. And when I open the onboarding list, I see the company added. Lastly, let's quickly review the email sequences. To create a sequence, click new sequence. Here you can adjust settings such as the time window for sending emails and choose whether to include weekends. You can customize the unsubscribe link at the bottom of your email, and if you prefer, you can send each email as a reply to the previous one in the sequence. You can also choose to automatically include the sender's signature, which you can set in your account settings after connecting your Google or Microsoft account. You can define exit criteria for the sequence, such as when the recipient replies to an email or books a meeting with you. 
In this case, the criteria is met when a calendar event is scheduled between the sender and the recipient. This is really cool. Once everything is set up, all you need to do is write your email. While composing, you can use variables, for example, hey followed by the recipient's first name. You can also add AI-generated content and attachments. For example, when a deal is won, the automation we set up earlier is triggered. After adding the company record to the onboarding list, the automation enrolls the person associated with that deal and company into this sequence. This way, they receive an onboarding questionnaire and a link to book a kickoff call. When you're ready, open the sequence settings panel and enable the delegated sending option so workflows have permissions to send this sequence. Now, publish the sequence. Return to your workflow and after the add record to list action, add enroll in sequence. Select the sequence, set the recipient as the person associated with the updated deal record, choose yourself as the sender and publish the change. From now on, whenever a deal is marked as one, the associated company will be added to the onboarding process and the person linked to that deal and company will receive a welcome email with all the details and next steps. But now the final question, how much does Atio cost? You can choose from three different plans including a free option and an affordable plus plan for small teams to get started. Obviously, to unlock all features such as custom objects and relationship attributes, email sequences and the integrated AI note taker for meetings, you'll need the pro plan. And this costs 69 euros per user per month when built annually or 86 euro per user per month when built monthly. And honestly, I think it's a fair price for a software like this. But here's the deal. If you create your workspace using my referral link, you'll get a 15% discount for your entire team for the first year. I leave the link in the description below. So let me know what you think in the comments and if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.